Today we're going to go over all you need to know for that proper pumpkin seed identification and more. A species that is misidentified more often than you might think. We'll go over where the species is found, look at the key features, do some comparisons with other fishes, check out the common hybrids, and I'll talk about some easy and effective ways to catch pumpkin seed on rod and reel. As always, I encourage you to share your fishing tips or related bits in our comment forum down below for the other fishers here at KNFS. I am Koa and this is KN Fishing Smarts where we fishers are always learning and sharing knowledge about fishing and fishes. And I just got back to Virginia after two months on the road working, definitely getting some footage of fishes while I was out on that trip for future KNFS projects. I have a nice little mini fishing adventure in Michigan I'll be releasing next, and then probably method two of the common sunfish fishing methods. But now I felt it was just time to make a video on what so many of you fishers have already expressed to be your favorite common sunfish, the pumpkin seed. A fish that also goes by some other common names you might have heard or even used, such as common sunfish, sun bass, sunny, punky, yellow sunfish, et pour mes amis canadiens français, capé soleil, which just translates to sun crappie, but the pumpkin seed's not a crappie. The true crappies are in a different genus, but still within that same family of centrocidae, uh, so they're sort of like distant cousins. Lepimus gibbosus, or the pumpkin seed, is native to the Atlantic drainages from New Brunswick down to the Savannah River in Georgia. This species is also native to the Great Lakes Basin, the southern part of the Hudson Bay Basin, and the upper Mississippi River Basin. Now, the pumpkin seed has been widely introduced across the northern parts of the United States, and even in some southerly locations like Mexico and California. In Canada, we're now seeing pumpkin seed populations in the southern parts of British Columbia spreading farther north into Ontario and Quebec. Across the pond, the United Kingdom and most countries in contiguous Western Europe now have established populations of pumpkin seed from Portugal and Spain up through France and into Italy and Germany, extending as far north as Finland and as far as Moscow and Ukraine's eastern border. This species will more than likely keep spreading, especially as climate change gives this species an advantage from early spawning, and also people keep introducing them to new bodies of water, which we know is often illegal and usually not an eco-friendly decision. Common Sunfish Basics Three good features to look at to make sure your fish is in the genus of Lepimus or the common sunfishes is just to quickly look at the body, spines, and tail. Like all our common sunfishes, the pumpkin seed has a deep and compressed body. We say deep as the vertical height is a good portion of the standard length, and we say compressed because from a dorsal or even a frontal view, the body is thin, looking like it's been squished or compressed. All common sunfishes will have three anal spines. This feature hardly ever varies to be more or less than three on any of the species in this genus. So those three anal spines are really great to examine. Finally, look at the tail fin. Common sunfishes have an indented tail fin, not a rounded tail fin like found in the similar looking genus of a Neocanthus. Now let's go over two features that will usually narrow down your ID to only three species within the genus, the mouth size and pectoral fin size. Only three species of common sunfishes both have a long and pointy pectoral fin as well as a small mouth, the bluegill, pumpkin seed, and red ear sunfish. The pectoral fin of these species will most always extend past the eye if bent forward. Pumpkin seed on average will have a shorter pectoral fin compared to the red ear sunfish and even the bluegill. And on a pumpkin seed, sometimes that pectoral fin will just barely extend past the eye or even just past the pupil. To know you don't have a bluegill, just notice that bluegill don't have any color edging on the ear flap while the pumpkin seed has a distinct reddish spot on the posterior margin with white edging both dorsally and ventrally. Bluegill have a dark dorsal blotch which is not present on the pumpkin seed. The red ear sunfish has a very similar ear flap to the pumpkin seed. 
So the best way to tell these species apart is to look for wavy blue streaking on the head. The pumpkin seed will typically have at least five to six wavy blue streaks running laterally on the head, and the readier sunfish may only show a faint bit of bluish iridescence if the light is right on that head. And readier will typically never have any orange or gold spots on the upper body, while this feature is fairly typical on pumpkin seed. The bluegill, readier sunfish, and pumpkin seed also have small mouths and jaws, with the posterior edge of the maxilla usually not passing the interior edge of the eye, or it may be near alignment with that edge. I do occasionally see pumpkin seed confused with green sunfish as they often cohabitate in the same waters. Just noticing that a green has a large mouth compared to the pumpkin seed will help decide your identification. Also notice that the green sunfish has that dark dorsal blotch, which is absent on the pumpkin seed. And lastly, just notice the pumpkin seed have pale, often iridescent blue lines radiating from the eyes that will have at least one or two of those lines coming from behind the eye and above the eye. The green sunfish doesn't usually ever express any complete lines at the eye level or above. Also what's great to notice on a pumpkin seed is the tall spines on that first dorsal fin. The third, fourth, and fifth spines are very tall where the fourth is typically the tallest. Green sunfish have rather short, more consistently sized dorsal spines. The pumpkin seed is one of the most vibrant and colorful species of common sunfishes. Just like most species on this earth, different specimens of the same species will show different colors and features even within the same population. Humans are a great supporting example. We don't all look exactly the same. There's a lot of variation, especially between populations, yet we still are all the same species. The body of a pumpkin seed may express a multitude of colors and patterns. Generally, the top of the body is olive to teal, blue or a pale coloring fading down to a greenish blue sheen along the side to an orange or yellow breast and belly. What's really key to recognize are the spots of brown to gold to orange that exist on much of the body. They'll start on the top and appear down to the belly, usually changing color as they move lower. It's just super rare to find a pumpkin seed that is not expressing any gold, orange or brown spots. These spots are good to use in comparison to a northern sunfish, a fish that has blue spots and also lives in those northerly waters of North America with the pumpkin seed. Now if you like free diving or snorkeling like I do, you'll notice that underwater pumpkin seed appear to have blue spots, especially those vibrant males and breeding colors. This is just how the light properties work in the water on the structural properties of the scales to highlight those high wavelength uh, reflecting scales. So yeah, pumpkin seed will have colors of pale blue to almost turquoise on the body, but since the orange, gold, and brown spots are so obvious when we are holding a fish out of the water and not the blue spots, we just don't call that particular blue on the body as blue spotting. The northern sunfish will most likely have some red and dark orange blotching in the median fins. Pumpkin seed do show plenty of irregular blotching in the median fins, but typically this color is brown to black, and sometimes it'll just be orange. If there is some orange, then it is typically much lighter and not containing any red as what is in the northern fins. And finally, just look at the pectoral fin. The pumpkin seed has that long and pointy pectoral fin that will normally pass the eye bent forward, while the northern sunfish is gonna have a shorter, bit more roundier pectoral fin and also of note, the northern sunfish will rarely get bigger than five inches in length, while the pumpkin seed can more than double that length. As we discussed earlier on the head of the pumpkin seed, there will usually be those five or six wavy light blue teal lines that radiate laterally. These blue streaky patterns usually start on the snout before the eye and extend across the cheek and operculum. Sometimes these may be very faded, almost just a drab whitish color, but the pattern of lines should be there. And that is a female outside of breeding season, and she is just very drab in her presentation. Here is a nice side-by-side -side of a male and female pumpkin seed in breeding colors. I picked up these lovely specimens near a spawning bed in a lake in Ohio, and you've already noticed how much more vibrant the male is than the female. 
His blue streaking on the head is very vibrant. His body has an explosion of orangey yellow with bright gold spots and his dorsal fin is showing that goldish blotching as well. And it's a bit hard to tell here, but he has more blue iridescence in the median fins than the female. Outside of breeding season, it can be much harder to tell the sexes apart just based on the colors and patterns, but males will typically be a bit larger and still express more color. The upper lip may or may not have blue coloration. I mention this because it's a good feature to look at on other species like the long ear or red breast, but it's too variable on the pumpkin seed. I've caught specimens where the blue is across the entire upper lip and specimens where it's not present at all and specimens with traces. And we should probably do one last comparison with the long ear sunfish because I do see this confusion occur, though the range overlap is minimal. And on a brief side note, I know a lot of you have been waiting for me to drop information on the long ear species complex, and I will get to that. Uh, a new study with genetic and morphological evidence did drop this year in its pre preliminary stages, and it looks like it's six new species, possibly two of those are subspecies, that that's all going to be split into. But I am waiting for more ichthyological authorities to sort of adopt this fully before I go ahead and start making that information for you on here on KNFS as well as at the website at koa.org. And one of those six species is the northern sunfish, which has already been split, but that was done years ago without any genetic evidence. Now the genetic evidence says, yeah, the northern should be a different species. So when that happens, that happens, and you know I'm going to take a road trip one day to go catch them all. So long ear get confused with pumpkin seed because of the bright blue head streaking, as well as the fact long ear can also have a bunch of orange or gold spots on the body. Long ear, like the northern sunfish, typically have blue spotting along the body, whereas, again, our pumpkin seed doesn't have blue spotting. Also, long ear typically have a longer ear flap without a solid patch of red. However, some populations actually do express a bit more patch-like bit of red in that ear flap. And a fisher I know in Alabama catches these all the time, and this southeastern most population of long ear will likely be soon labeled under the species name called Lepimus solis. The body of a pumpkin seed will often show barring. It may be very flared up and quite visible on adults, or it may be hardly visible. This barring feature is usually chain-like on the young, and often so on females as well. And identifying most of the common sunfishes while they are smaller than about an inch is really, really hard and often just impractical. At about an inch and a half, the pumpkin seed colors with that spotting should appear with a bit of color shown up on that ear flap. So now let's look at the two most common hybrid types, and that's the mix with the green sunfish and the bluegill. And keep in mind that hybrids show even more tremendous amount of variation, and all the ones I've caught just kind of weren't on that spectrum. So I reached out to some guys that had some really good photos of the more typical types, and they were kind enough to let me show them to you here. The pumpkin seed bluegill hybrid will express a long pointy pectoral fin and a small mouth as is seen on both parent species. The ear flap will typically display some red like we see on the pumpkin seed but presented in a duller often broken pattern. The lateral pattern will display a lot of variation but usually never appears like either parent species, rather a mixture. So here we have a rather drab bluegill-like top with the pumpkin seed-like orange spotting lower down. And the head streaking of the pumpkin seed is expressed, usually with thicker and fewer lines. The green pumpkin seed hybrid will usually show a shorter pectoral fin and a bit larger of mouth than a pure pumpkin seed, as the green sunfish has that large mouth and that short pectoral fin, so we see that intermediacy show up. The head streaking is usually thinner and a brighter blue, and usually will have some continued at the eye level or above, like we see on the pumpkin seed. The dorsal spines are often shorter, like we see on a green sunfish, and the median fins will usually have more orange and white tinged edging which is also from that green parent. And quite often this blue spot pattern will show up and that looks really like a greens blue spotting 
but completely thrown around. Size. So pumpkin seed are one of the larger species within the genus. No page and burr in their field guide to freshwater fishes suggests that the species may get up to 16 inches or 40 centimeters. That is something likely only seen in those closed pond systems. In the wild, the general maximum length will be around 12 inches or 30 centimeters. If you've gotten yourself an 8 inch pumpkin seed, then you've gotten yourself a nice specimen. If you've got a 10 inch pumpkin seed, it's worth getting a weight on it because you might have a state or a county record. And the IGFA All Tackle World Record is 0.68 kilograms or 1 pound 8 ounces. Habitat. So the pumpkin seed is found in a variety of habitats from lakes and ponds to creeks and rivers. Pumpkin seed prefer sandy and gravel substrate for spawning. And you can often see the male sitting on beds. This is a male on a nest he's built in a creek and I really enjoy watching them diligently guard their nest and then fan their eggs with their tails. And that fanning gives the eggs some oxygen and keeps the eggs clear of debris. And of course it's fun watching the males try to court a female and then try to keep her inside the nesting area so she'll drop more eggs that he can then fertilize. It's, it's an organized chaos going on in there. It's just fun to watch. Targeting lepamids in waters that contain other lepamids or those common sunfishes can be a bit tricky because they're often uh, hanging out together. Here we have a red breast sunfish and a pumpkin seed together in a creek and you'll notice they both have similar head streaking but the pumpkin seed has that red spot on the ear flap while the red breast has a black backed edging. And here we have a pumpkin seed hanging out with a green sunfish and remember the green has that dark spot on the dorsal fin. And here we have a bunch of bluegill in a lake hanging out with a pumpkin seed. So unless you're able to sight fish, it's really about picking your location to where you know these lepamids will be. One key feature that most of the common sunfishes prefer is some sort of cover. Be it a fallen tree, lily pads, or a shelter, or some sort of macrophytes. And, and that's just a fancy science word for aquatic plants. Sometimes in a creek or river, they'll be hanging out in a tree's root ball that might not be visible from your perspective but it offers plenty of cover under the bank for the fish to hang out. And those tall cabbage plants are great places to find pumpkin seed. Of all the biggest pumpkin seed I've pulled in my life, they didn't come from shoreline fishing. They were all sitting about 10 to 14 feet of water in lakes sitting near tall cabbage or near a dropped shelter. One nice thing about the pumpkin seed, like most of the common sunfishes, is that they'll hit a wide array of baits. Uh, be it your live bait, your flies, or your other artificial lures. And I just can't avoid telling you about the first option that I've mentioned before. It's those owner size 6 mosquito circle hooks with a bit of worm on them. That size 6 hook will land you adults and present something big enough for a record breaker pumpkin seed to hit. A hook and worm is really all you need. But adding a split shot weight about 12 to 16 inches up the line can help you play to the depth you want to get to faster and add casting distance. Remember, this is a circle hook that self-sets, so you don't really set the hook. Don't give it a big yank. You're just kind of keeping pressure on the line after that fish is on. I've also been experimenting with a number of soft plastic configurations in the last few years because they just work so well. Pumpkin seed just go nuts for weighted jig heads and soft plastics. And if you saw my last video, I basically already laid out what I've come to trust brand wise for the weighted jig head and soft plastic department. But like I mentioned earlier, I just got back to Virginia and I had a special order waiting for me. So I'm about to try out an entire arrangement I bought of Mule Fishing's weighted jig heads and soft plastics. So this company is owned by the man who has the online outdoorsman channel here on YouTube. I called him and briefly chatted about his lures and he's really passionate about them and just pan fishing in general and I'm excited to try them. It's all about that wiggle and these look like they have a great wiggle. And as you can see from his photos using his lures, he slays pumpkin seed on them so I have high hopes. But to paraphrase my father, he always says fishing lures attract more anglers than they do fishes so I'm gonna test these out and I'm gonna I'm gonna really put them to the test I'm going on a trip next week Northeast so make sure you're subscribed to see 
how I like the mule fish and lures, or you can just go to mule fishing and try them out yourself. I'll put the link to it down below. And and that's a non-endorsed plug. I am gonna test the shit out of these lures. We'll see. So finally, I just wanna share a rig that I've used for decades. I've caught my biggest pumpkin seed on this simple rig. It's a rig I use for deeper water around 10 to 20 feet that gets to the bottom and gets past the little ones. It's sort of a Carolina rig with a floating jig head. There's a number of ways to tie this, but the simplest is just to take a bullet weight and slide it up your line, then tie on a floating jig head, then I toss on a split shot, usually sitting about 12 inches up from your hook. Now, that hook size should be a, a big hook if you want only big pumpkin seed. I'm talking what's usually labeled as a size 4, 3, or even 2. If you want more fish, then you want to go with a size 8 or 6. But alternatively, if you like using leaders, just toss on that bullet sinker, then a bead, then your swivel. And swivel is usually good because it gives you that rotation. And then your leader goes on with the floating jig head on it. Now you can attach anything you want to this floating jig head. Cut shrimp, worms, even a plastic. But what I prefer is a live leech. I've gotten 10 inch pumpkin seed on live leeches and leeches are tougher than worms and won't get snatched off the hook as easily by the smaller fish. Take this rig and drop it near shelters next to patches of tall cabbage or just next to some other patch of vegetation in deeper water and there's a good chance you'll pull up some nice fish. Probably some nice bass too. I will note that your shark tooth specimens like your walleye and pike will often hit this, especially if you got a live leech on. And it'll, if you don't have a strong line, it'll just cut it right off. So then that brings me to the next point. You want to check to make sure that your rig is floating. Too heavy a bait with too heavy of a leader will sink your floating jig head, which will mess up the presentation you want and lessening the hook set chances. So just test your combo in the water before you let it sink all the way to make sure your floating jig head is floating with the bait on it. Remember to share your fishing tips uh, for pumpkin seed down below or other stories or anecdotes or whatnot. The comments is sort of our KNFS forum here where it's not just me rambling all the time. It's a way we can all pool our collective uh, fishing wisdom. Fish responsibly and good luck.